Hey guys, it's Woody. Welcome to Mail Monday. I'm actually out of Call of Duty footage right now, so I dropped Borderlands on instead, but that doesn't matter because this series isn't so much about the gameplay. Instead, it's about your questions and my answers to them. Here we go. <laughs> Everyone thinks I've gone crazy. Please help. Hey Woody, I've written a couple drafts of this message, but none of them let the truth go. So here it is. I'm a 15 year old who is a believer in the Rastafarian movement. I'm not some skater kid who just wears green, red, and gold and smokes weed. I have the mindset, beliefs, and morality of Rastafarian teachings. That's why I label myself as one. I completely reject the lifestyle of Western society. I believe that the former emperor of Ethiopia is the returned Christ, and my biggest goal in life is to live off the earth completely. I would build my house, grow my food, hunt for it if desperate, and just live free like the animals that humans are. I've told many people about my views, including my parents, and I just keep getting laughed at, judged, and rejected. I'm not depressed because every time I'm in nature, I'm immediately filled with happiness. No one talks to me, and I get harassed for my very long, uncombed hair pretty often. My parents make fun of me as well by mimicking what I tell them, except they add a Jamaican accent. They're trying to make me convince myself that I sound crazy. I'm also a vegan who eats mainly raw fruits and vegetables. The only problem with living like this in society is that it comes with rejection. My question to you, Woody, is should I follow my dreams of living completely natural life I dream of, or should I try to make my friends and family happier by caring about the popular things in life, appearance, education, money, and material possessions? Doing this would make me fit in more, but it would not make me the person I am. Sorry if I wasn't clear, I'm just in a hard part in my life. The road is split in two, and I need to choose the right one for me. Please, Woody, help. I've never seen a topic like this on Mail Monday. Any response would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, man, congratulations. We are like 103 episodes into this series, and I have never seen a question really even remotely like this one. But uh, but I think I do have some advice. Like, this is what I would tell my kids. It, it's not that you're wrong, right? I, I really don't think you are. It, it, if this is your path to happiness, then, you know, perhaps it's not such a crazy thing. But the other thing is this. You're 15, and if you're anything like the majority of society, you're going to change your mind regarding what brings you true happiness 10 times between now and when you sort of settle in on the right answer for you. When you're 12, every option in the world is open to you. You could be an astronaut. You could be a test pilot. You could be a rock star. You could like the whole world is open. And then as you go through life, you sit there and close doors, you know, are you not practicing this or that? Are you you know, getting bad grades and shutting off certain career opportunities. You know, you, you can't be a doctor if you mess up in high school too badly, right? It, it, it's probably going to close that door. Uh, you, you, so anyway, you want to be a Rastafarian. Well, that's all right, but you're 15, so you've got time to make some decisions. You're, you're 15, so the, like you're not closing the door on this thing. Just don't close the door on the other things as well. This can still go the way you want it to. Just... Like, <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is get good grades and stay in school. If you do that, then how long your hair was at 15 won't matter. You know, you might completely adopt this and become a guru of some sort and the whole world will follow your teachings. Or you might be posting pictures on Reddit of the 15 year old version of you and, and getting a, a giggle out of, you know, the, the thoughts that used to be important to you. And I keep knocking the 15-year-old thing. It's not that 15-year-olds are stupid. It's that they're growing up, right? All 15-year-olds are still growing up. And what you value in terms of what makes you happy, what, what constitutes who you are and who you aspire to be is still evolving at 15. And you know, I bet if you look back two years, you'll see a very different person. And I promise you, if you look to forward two years, you'll probably also see a very different person there too. And, it, it, and I, I say that not as a knock against you. I say that as a guy who's been 15 and who's seen a lot of them and it's a growing up process. You know, heck, I was a much different person at 19 than I was at 17. It is the nature of the game. So, you know, when you ask like, hey, I've got this road, you know, and I'm trying to decide which path to take, my answer to you is 
don't choose a path just yet, you know? Don't say, for example, ignore your grades in high school. I assume you're American, I can't be sure. Um, don't, for example, ignore your grades in high school because you're not going to need them as you build your own house and live off the land and, you know, just grab some place in a national forest. Um, don't close any doors, man. You don't have to. You don't need to. Just don't do it. And that way, if the 17 version, 17-year-old version, 17 version of you or 19-year-old version of you wants to take a different path away from Rastafarian, then those doors are still open. That's my advice to you. And, uh, you know, if whatever you finish high school or even college and say, you know what, all this stuff sucks and all you people are wrong and the Rastafarian thing that I figured out at 15 is still right, then be that guy. That guy's not causing anybody any harm. So I don't have any problem with him. How to get my German sausage into her belly button. Well, he got me to click on the title. <laughs> I realize you're probably flooded with questions like this, but my question isn't being asked because I've only watched a couple of your videos. I'm writing to you because I genuinely feel like you haven't successfully answered the question that goes to the heart of what I feel is most people's issue with getting girls. I am limiting this question to guys in school who actually know the girl and have classes with them, i.e. they've spoken to them, but they aren't really friends, just acquaintances. The problem isn't just rejection, but the long-term consequences of it. Awkwardness, laughing, mocking, maybe even disgust that the girl and maybe her friends will show. Going up to a girl when you know you're probably never going to see them again is easy, but the problem lies when every day you see them and feel like crap. So my question is, and I'm sure many others, how is it that one not only approaches the girl, but proceeds to ask her out to minimize future awkwardness and rejection? Telling us basically not to give a shit isn't particularly helpful. I know how it goes in America, or I don't know how it goes in America, but in New Zealand, the schools are smaller and word gets around quickly. So it is, be is it better to become friends with the girl and ask her out to help her study or something similar? Would sneaking a letter in her locker be an awful idea? My question demands an answer, Woody. I like him. I'm not going to accept it just because you're ignoring it because it sounds cliche. I'm sure you get a lot of questions, but this concerns me, which makes it more important. As silly as it sounds, never getting a girl is one of the reasons I feel suicidal. Goodness. So if there's any way you can provide, if there's any help you can provide that isn't what you've already done, yes, there's girls, but that isn't the point. I would love to hear it. If it's any help, I'm 17 and I'm male, uh, in case you thought I swung that way. <laughs> um, and I'm pretty sure it's already Monday in America, so I guess this will have to sit in a corner and weep until next week. All right, so this guy is concerned that when he asks a girl out, it's going to like end the whole deal for him, that they're going to be laughing him and mocking him, etc., I contend that's not true. And and let me lay it out there, especially if you're in school right now. When you hear that a guy asked a girl out and it didn't go his way, right? What are you thinking about that guy? Are you thinking, oh my God, that guy's a loser. Oh my God, that guy has no social future. It's all done for him now. It, it, this is the end. Probably not, right? You're probably thinking that you've been there too. This is, this is a club with many members. The got turned down by a girl club. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I think pretty much everybody is in the got turned down by a girl club because it's happened. Everybody poops, everybody wanks, and everybody gets turned down by girls. It's part of the human condition, and there's not much that you can do about it. I think that this notion that the entire school is going to be judging you harshly and thinking less of you and such is really only existing in your own mind. Um, you know, that <laughs> that's the first point I want to nail home that the downside to a girl not liking you isn't nearly as bad as you think it is. Uh, the truth is, if a girl doesn't like you, then you just shrug your shoulders and go on and, and keep your chin high. Having said that, you didn't ask for a pep talk. You asked for actionable advice on how to minimize the fallout of a girl saying no. And it, I've got two phases of this answer, by the way. The first part in minimizing the fallout is controlling your reaction to it. You know, if, if somebody says, ah, oh, you got turned down by, you know, whatever, Mary Wilder, you shrug your shoulders and be like, yeah, it happens. You know, I'm on to my next girl or I'm, I'm picking out a new one right now. And, um... You know, call it good. If you don't make a big deal out of it, it becomes far less of a big deal. So know that and use that. Don't sit there and, and get, you know, suicidal over some girl not liking you. Or if you do, keep that in your own head. Into the external world, just be like, yeah, didn't work out. 
picking out the next one as we speak. That's your answer. The next thing, actionable advice as to how to get the girl and stop her from saying no. Like, it, here's the deal: establish a relationship. Don't get too close. You know, don't go all friend zoney right off the bat. But talk to her. Drop her a compliment. Tell her you like her shirt. Tell her her hair looks nice today. I don't know. I I, I keep away from the skirt because I think that's just sort of a synonym for I like your ass. But um. You know, tell her she looks nice. Tell her, you know, that something went well. Drop her a compliment and see how she reacts. Um, see if she returns your gaze now and then. You know, if you can get her, whatever, twirling her hair while she looks at you or doing some sort of flirty thing, then you're in, right? So, so that's my advice to you. Establish some sort of thing, move in closer, and when the time comes to ask her out, you don't have to even fully, fully commit. You can ask her to do something with you and not define it as a date. And then if she says no, just be like, all right, whatever, you know? Maybe she doesn't, really, you, you want to catch, you're from New Zealand, so the football game doesn't work. And in America, American high schools, Friday night football game is this big social event. Lots of people go. They cheer for the team, etc. Uh, that would be an awesome thing to ask a girl to. Um, I don't know if something similar exists in New Zealand, but I assume it does. You guys are sporty. But you can ask her to go to some event. You can ask her to go to something that doesn't necessarily have to be like full-on romantic. And uh, if she says no, just like, eh, whatever. You know, I was looking for a whatever partner for my plus one on something it, it didn't have to be all romantic and commitmenty. so um the steps to asking her out and making sure she says yes drop her compliments see if she's returning your gazes um ask her to some event that doesn't necessarily have to be all datey romantic like a movie or a dinner or something like that uh, be yourself and be confident and if she says no you know just know it's kind of her loss and 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 that's the deal so um so there's my actionable advice try and get her to like you or try and get a feeling for whether or not she likes you before you ask her out and um, you know that that's how I would work it with girls that you're going to be seeing again on a daily basis, you know, reduce the, the risk there. I, and on a related note, when I asked my wife to marry me, there was no question regarding what her answer was going to be. I knew damn sure that she was going to say yes. I, I was not one of those guys that took a flyer and hoped that this girl liked me enough to, to say yes. I was not one of those guys who, you know, hoped that the ring itself would sell her on the idea of marriage. That wasn't it. You know, I, I, I had it locked down. I knew what the answer would be before I asked her to marry me. There was never a question or a doubt. Um, that, that was, my wife was impatiently waiting for me to, uh, to ask her to marry me. Um, when you ask a girl out, if you can get anywhere near that same situation where it's totally obvious that she's digging you, that she's returning your gaze, she's twirling her hair, she's talking to you, she's eating up your compliments. If, um, if that's the relationship you can work with her before you ask her out, then you're in a really good spot. And, um, and that's that. So to summarize, if she says no, don't make a big deal out of it. Uh, don't let other people feed off you making a big deal out of it. Understand that no one thinks it's as big deal as you seem to think in your head. And, uh, um, you know, try and uh, get her to like you with some compliments and such. But not, by the way, I should throw out, not freaking too many acts of kindness uh, before you ask a girl out. I, I want to drop that. If you become her maid, if you become her homework doer, if you become, you know, whatever, the person who carries her books or her some sort of like, you know, dominatrix victim person thing uh, before you ask her out, then that's not putting you in the position to make her like you more in a romantic way. That, uh, that idea is a fail. So, you know, keep it casual, keep your chin up, stay uh, full on man and not like manservant before you ask her out. Because even though it, to some guys it can be kind of intuitive to like do nice things to get a girl to like you, uh, that isn't actually the key to making it so. Uh, being a little more casual and confident is, is a better way to get her to like you than to, uh, just, I don't know, take her trash out. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, send wine, women, and fabulous prizes to me in the mail, stuff like that. Have a good day.